Hi there, I'm Christine Zips with a spe special back to school message for school administrators. It's been about a year since I recorded my first back to school message. That one was targeted to parents to kind of go over with them the typical list that they might be referring to to gather all the supplies for their child to go back to school for the new session. And many of these items had to do with safety, like they said that they don't want the children to have rolling backpacks. And I was guessing that that was probably because they could be a potential tripping hazard. I thought that was a good idea. And all of the typical things that you see on the list um, that one would expect. And I pointed out that they were doing well with that list, except for one major exception. They were not sharing that when the children return to school, they will be entering an atmosphere where they will be exposed to dangerous levels of pulsed microwave radiation emitting from the varied and numerous wireless devices inside their classrooms, including commercial grade access points, also known as routers, usually mounted in the ceiling, uh, laptops, iPads, whiteboards, virtual reality headsets, and if the children are um, allowed to bring in their smartphones, their wireless phones, that would add to the load as well. It's a cumulative exposure. But for the last year, I've been doing my best, along with all the members from our Wired Schools group, to raise awareness about this, to share that, um, that this exposure is a serious deal. And it's a hard sell because we're talking about a man-made environmental pollutant that you can't see, smell, taste, hear, or feel for the most part. So it's difficult to believe that it's a real concern. Yet, as most of you are aware, with the proliferation of wireless technology on our planet, I think there are more devices out there than there are people these days. But along with this proliferation from this technology, there's been um, a parallel increase, a shocking comparison with chronic diseases uh, with children. I mean, this radiation is affecting every living being on the planet, but our children are more vulnerable for many reasons, including that they can absorb up to 10 times more radiation. But, you know, children, um, they trust us or their parents to keep them safe. And we, their parents, trust the schools to keep their children safe while they're there. Some five days a week, six days, six hours a day, five days a week for the duration of their school career. And again, that they are um, unwittingly being victims to this. And our Wired Schools group is monitoring, in fact, cancer and suicide clusters in the United States that um, that there, for example, there is a cancer cluster in Ripon, California at Weston Elementary School. I believe the last count, uh, sadly, it kind of changes, but um, that there were some six to seven students that had been diagnosed with various types of cancers, and I believe three teachers. We, our Wired Schools group recently sponsored a roundtable featuring nine experts, subject matter experts, talking about these suicide and cancer clusters. We were exploring causation and solutions. We dedicated the event to one of the children from this school, Mason Ferruli. He's pictured here in this collage his mother put together for him. And he was diagnosed, sadly, with brain cancer about a year and a half ago. And um, glioblastoma is the type of cancer he, he has. And he underwent surgery and uh, traditional treatment. And it was thought that he was doing really well, that they had licked it. But however, sadly, it has returned. Um, and when he was diagnosed about a year and a half ago, he, when he realized the seriousness of this, he looked at his mom and said, do you think I'm going to make my 13th birthday? 
Well, Mason did make his 13th birthday, and his mother put together this great collage um, for his birthday, 13th birthday, about a couple months ago. So we have de dedicated the event to Mason, and he's a strong young man. His parents are strong. His mother championed a cause at the school, gathered other parents together to speak out against this, to stand down, to um, sprint the carrier for this cell tower that's at this particular school on the school grounds. The, um, the cancer that we understand from the parents, the doctors will confirm that the cause is an environmental cause. And again, this pulsed microwave radiation coming from the wireless devices is a man-made environmental pollutant. And um, there are many ways, things that we can do to reduce our exposure. However, the children, as long as this is allowed to remain wireless technology, that the schools don't wire or hardwire the schools, which is makes it safe, it's much faster, it doesn't carry with it additional implications such as addiction, data harvesting, and um, you know surveillance that they are, it's just a dangerous technology. But since I've been producing these videos, more and more people, it started out as parents for the most part, usually moms, our Mama Bear Network, they've been reaching out and asking for information about this. How can I stand up against it? Is it really true? You know, is this really happening? Um, because, you know, again, we're not pointing fingers. We're not holding up mirrors. We're not against technology. Um, I certainly use it. We're, we're looking for safe use of technology. And they talk about being state of art, state of the art, being able to connect with the internet faster. But wired connections have been proven to be safer. They're they're not hackable like wireless connections are, and um, they're just they're better quality connections and they're safer. But these children are coming down with symptoms and some teachers coming down with symptoms that include usually to start with headaches nose and ear bleeds, tinnitus, heart palpitations, fatigue, brain fog, dizziness, and they are getting, can be more serious after longer period of time, not too much longer, but they can come down. There are children being fitted with pacemakers for Pete's sakes. And just a couple of children in Simcoe County, I believe in the Ontario County um, area of Canada, have passed from heart attacks and sadly, and there are suicides. And this technology is associated with anxiety, which kind of leads into depression. Many parents will take their children to, to specialists to you know, get diagnosed with this. And when it is deemed that they indeed do have depression, they will prescribe usually the psychotropic drugs. And those are connected with violent behaviors, suicidal ideations, and emotional outbursts. And teachers are reporting more and more outbursts from their students these days. And um, it, it's just all connected. So we'd like to you know, have you consider this, that one of our uh, recent, just last week, we received an inquiry from a principal and he had listened to a presentation from a parent at a school board presentation and just bringing in all the facts, very calmly saying, we do not want this exposure for our, our children, and we're asking you please to consider hardwiring the school. They had all the facts and gave a really powerful presentation. The principal was so impressed, he invited the parent in to talk more about that and was further convinced that the next step would be to bring in an independent certified building biologist. And the biologist came into the school, took measurements with the meters and tools to as make assessments for the emissions from the wireless devi devices inside the school. And indeed, they were extremely high. And uh, the written report recommended uh, prompt hardwiring of the schools. Now, this principle seems to be thoroughly convinced that this is the way to go. However, he's concerned about potential pushback industry, um, because they have no problem putting profit before people, they are pushing this technology. This technology has not been tested, non-industry funded testing. 
and they're pushing the technology and school administrators, you know, they'll say, well, we've got to keep up with the times. It's state of the art. This is the way kids are learning these days. We want to, we want to be up with the times. So we're going to stay with this plan. Meanwhile, the children and the teachers are getting sicker and sicker. So this is a serious thing that you'll want to look into. I highly suggest you do so and recommend that you consider hardwiring your schools. So um, I have to confess that this matter is so important to me. I have spent many days putting together this presentation. It was getting to be so long with all these reference citations that go along with it that they wouldn't fit into one video for YouTube in the comments section. But I wanted you to have this information. But I also didn't want you to sit through a long presentation of watching my talking head. Um, I wanted you to encourage you to take your own time, do your own research, and see what you think. But I wanted to let you know that I'd like to offer my assistance to um, be here for you. We're putting together a network of other parents and school administrators to have an opportunity to brainstorm, to share experiences and ideas that uh, we could set up private, online, secure, encrypted um, roundtable meetings using Zoom, which is much more secure than Skype, um, where you could have meetings. And I'd be happy to host, or I can certainly step aside, and you can just meet with um, other school administrators, maybe parents in your schools. If you'd like for me to arrange these types of meetings, there's absolutely no cost and you don't need to share who all is going to be involved there. You can record the meetings if you want, but you certainly don't have to. But um, you can sign up to our Wired Schools group through Facebook. And if you're not on Facebook, I can offer to add you to our email list where you'll be notified of more videos coming out and articles and um, just events that we're planning, more roundtables that you should find of interest. And even if you want to join our weekly planning committee meetings, you'd be more than welcome to. This is just an open forum, transparent, and you would be among kindred spirits here. We're uh, mostly parents and grandparents and teachers, and we care about our children. So we know you do too. We know you want to do the right thing, but we also can understand the tricky position you are in, kind of walking in between, wanting to do right for the children who you love, who we love, and listening to the parents and their concerns, um, and knowing what pushback you might be getting from industry. But hopefully, you'll be looking to do the right thing, making the right choice. And when you do, when you finally do make that leap, we hope, to wire your school, keep in mind that you'll in a position to be a beacon in your community a hero for your students and teachers and staff, that you have made the leap to do the right thing to wire the schools. And even if after you consider all of the thousands of peer-reviewed, published, non-industry sponsored scientific studies that support this harm that's being done to children, children's brains and bodies and future generations, it does in fact affect infertility or fertility that um, you're in a position to be a model school, that it won't take long at all for your students, moms to interact, usually it's moms, but parents to interact with other parents from other schools and say, our school is all wired and, and my child feels so much better that he used to have headaches in school and now, now just right away he's feeling better, he's learning, he's more attentive, he doesn't have the brain fog, he's able to concentrate and you know pay attention to his lessons and he's happier because he's not all this distracted by all of this te technology. But that, that would put you in a position to be a model school for not only locally, but nationally, if not globally. So, you know, there are many other administrators who are looking into this and they want to do the right thing. But I truly believe that when you're surrounded with, you know, other administrators and parents, and you have an opportunity to talk about this, you know, is this real? What should we do? How should we do it? That, again, I, I'm 
I, along with all the members from our Wired Schools, we're in a position to help you, whether it is to connect you with a certified independent building biologist to come in and measure your school, see what you think, how they measure up, um, that that could be good, maybe even vetting some um, electrical contractors. You might even have IT staff on hand who are capable of doing the wiring um, themselves. A little uh, word of caution that if, if you do it yourselves, if they do it in-house, that they'll want to um, check with local building codes to make sure that you're following those local uh, wiring electrical guidelines. So um, thank you for listening. I feel like I've been rambling a little bit, but I didn't want to read my script. I hope you know that I'm sincere. I'm providing all sorts of information along with my email address. Please don't be shy. I really hope you'll not hesitate to say, you know, I could, I'd like some more information. I don't understand ABC. Could you give me more information on this? Or, or how is it that it could be this way? Can you connect me with other people in my area? Um, be more than happy to do so. Please consider us to be partners with you as you look into this to make your best decision. So thank you so much for your time and consideration. I also wanted to offer you that I'm more than happy to share with you my, um, my script. I was going to divide this into five sections. We're going to have the introduction. We're going to have problems reactions, solutions, and final thoughts. There were going to be five separate short videos along with all of the reference citations for each one. But rather than trying to pull that together, I just couldn't pull it together without reading. So I hope you'll uh, be okay with the way I put this together today. And don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much for your time. If you like the content here, would love to have a thumbs up for you to share with others and post some comments and questions. And we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. We're in this together. We admire everything you're doing, and thank you for considering being a hero for our children, our future. Bye for now.